Hello, it is Thursday, May 5th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday puzzle, so we have something complicatedly themed today, most likely, and I can see, I can see there are circled cells in the grid behind the gauzy privacy veil, so that that's already a, an encouraging sign as far as I'm concerned. And this encouraging edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Laura Sexton, Alex, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and help making this series a sustainable part of my daily work. I do very much appreciate that. So thank you to everybody who has done so. If you'd like to join those benefactors and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. But of course, there you can also find how to back the campaign at any level and get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. There's another boss words. I think the final boss words puzzle actually I could be wrong. I think it's, I think it's the final puzzle that I need to, I need to solve this week. So um, perhaps I'll do that today. Um, in any case, uh, do subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so. That's free, and the daily self Discord chat server is also free to join. You can get an extra channel if you're a Patreon subscriber. All right, now I think we're ready to get on to today's crossword. This was constructed by Adam. Wagner, who I just realized I need to, um, it's constructed about, <laughs> sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. Uh, constructed somewhere around 10 crosswords or so, a large handful. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm distracted or something. Let's get onto the puzzle. No, nothing more to say. What am I, what am I waiting for? Constructed by Adam Wagner, edited as always by Will Shorts. There we go. We're going to solve it now. Let's play. Little 19 across. Oh, look at this. Oh, there's a, um, a spiral shape in the grid, or maybe it's a wave, or maybe it's a sort of a shell, a sort of snail shell. Interesting. I wonder what that means. And the circled cells, well, so three of them do follow. They do follow the spiral pattern. And then the rest are up here at the top. Okay, I really don't know what this means. I mean, why would I? But of course I don't. Let's, let's go ahead. So little 19 across. And 19 says, many people do this about their height. Sorry, if this, this might be a common phrase, but I, for whatever reason, I don't, I don't see it. Units on check checks. And Perry, who used to have the world's most followed Twitter account. I have no idea. So units on check checks. So this will be a check monetary unit. Is it not COPEX? I must be misremembering that. It doesn't look like it fits. Let's we'll start with K. Perry, who used to have the world's most followed Twitter. It wouldn't be Tyler Perry, would it be? Oh, Kate Perry? Or Katy Perry is the singer. Maybe. Wow, I wouldn't have... Who would have guessed that? That's funny. Um, is that how you spell her name? What about this? Common recipe step. Add salt, maybe. Right, I'm off to a slow start with this with this um, crossword here. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but you can always rely on an ode to uh, move us along in a crossword. A written honor is an ode. You might write an ode in honor to something. A Grecian urn, for instance. Nutritional figure. Um, recommended daily... I can never remember if it's allowance or value. RDA sort of looks right to me. Where second gentleman Doug Emhoff got his JD. Um, USC, maybe? Law school? Juris doctorate? Um, I must be wrong about the Czech monetary unit. Uh, pass means... Nah, maybe? I'm not sure. And smart name, smart aleck, people often say. And a razor sharpener would be a strop, like a leather strop to sort of hone a razor. What does this teacher look like? Someone well-versed in this puzzle's theme. Ah, math teacher, maybe? Is it, maybe this is a Fibonacci sequence or something? Oh, just saw something. I'll wait until we get to it. Well, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll look at it now. <laughs> when preceded by... 
the circled letters, natural shape said to be seen in 61 across and 27 down. Oh, I bet it is a Fibonacci sequence. I wonder if I can write in Fibonacci sequence. No, two, no, two, no. Sorry, I can't seem to remember how to spell Fibonacci. <laughs> Does sequence fit here? No. Okay, maybe that's wrong. Let's keep solving the puzzle. James of Carpool Karaoke fame. Oh, James um, Corden, uh, some kind of comedian or host of something. And uh, these videos, they show up on YouTube sometimes. Mideast Gulf of Aden. And a student-led LGBTQ plus group. Uh, student-led, I'm not sure offhand. What about this? What psychotherapy can treat in brief? OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, possibly? And, right, many people do, oh, lie about their height, maybe? So, one across referred to that. Little, a little lie. Oh, is a fib. Oh, it is a Fibonacci sequence. <laughs> fib, oh, oh, interesting. So we have to spell it out in the circles. Oh, and it, uh, Right. How does this work? So it's one plus zero is one. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Is it then th three plus two is five. Five plus three is eight. Right. Okay. This is how you make um, the Fibonacci sequence, which is a famous um, mathematical sequence of numbers. You you uh, Each entry in the sequence is comprised, is the sum of the two previous numbers. So uh, one, we say, is followed by zero, so you'd, uh, well, actually, I guess you just start with one, and then two, because otherwise you'd never get, you'd never get past zero. Anyway, you start with one. <laughs> two is then one plus zero. Three is two plus one. Five is three plus two. Eight is five plus three, and so on. So, um, so A is 13, and what's funny about this is that They've been placed into the proper numbered uh, cells of the grid rather than the sort of uh, um, their sort of ordinal ordinal position in the grid. If you see what I mean, so this five here, this is actually the sixth cell in in the in the crossword because of this black cell here, but which is not numbered. Uh, and so I guess we're following the whole sequence. So thirteen would be followed by twenty one, yes, which it is, which would then be followed by. 34, yes, which it is, and then I'll stop adding. Okay, 55. Very clever. Okay, so Fibonacci. Okay, so I was right the first time when I tried to spell it that way. So what does, now what did this say again? When preceded by the circled letters, natural shape said to be seen in 61 across and 27 down. Okay, I think I just misinterpreted this clue. So the natural shape would be some kind of I don't know, shell maybe, like I was saying at the beginning. And then what is this pass? Oh, nah. So I guess the check um, unit is Karuna's. Sorry about that, getting that wrong. And then someone of Elverston's puzzles theme. It is indeed a math teacher. So I think that I think math teacher is what is what suggested Fibonacci to me. And then to starve is to famish. I'm starved. I'm famished. You gave me no choice. I had to. I had to skip to the to the theme revealer. I had to. I was forced by the math teacher. Brings home, um, not sure actually, just as I suspected, aha, and opining opening, I dare say, or I'd say, there we go, brings home. Is this baseball? I'm not sure exactly what this is. When doubled, sarcastic laugh, har har maybe, and turn on the stove. We have a question mark here indicating a pun or wordplay. So you could turn something on the stove. You could stir it, literally turn it. And a bat's in, this must be baseball. And then sugar is hun. So these are pet names for a partner, for instance. Okay, hammer part. You could have a, a peen, a ball peen hammer the, uh, that you use to hit things. And REO Speedwagon is... Um, I think both both a, a model, an actual vehicle, and also a band named after it. Okay, first word of Pose the Raven. Once, right? Yes. 
and numerical constant associated with the circled letters. Golden ratio. Right. Right. Yes. This is often associated with um, uh, composition of, of paintings and things like that. Um, and people, people will often sometimes go to fairly tortured lengths to, uh, to illustrate how a particular painting, usually a, I don't know, Renaissance painting or something like that, will actually have the whole composition mapped out according to this, uh, this golden ratio. If you, if you sort of, um, implement the, <laughs> this Fibonacci sequence in, in, in that way, uh, I'm sure there's some truth to it, but it definitely it sort of be, has become, I think, a kind of meme in our in art appreciation, and has has maybe gone beyond reality. Anyway, summer learning opportunity for students, science camp maybe. Um, okay, king of ancient Rome would be Rex. I mean, that's just king in Latin, so that's straightforward. Um, Many security guards are what? Uh, oh, ex-cops, maybe. And Duke's group, ACC. It's a, some kind of athletic conference. Um, oops. Um, yeah, someone will tell me. <laughs> Foolish person, a... A simp, a simpleton, maybe. Like some, I'm not sure. Let's see. I mean that. Well, <laughs> that's a word that seems to have returned in a completely different form recently. But it, but uh, traditionally would have meant simpleton. Uh, some convertible choices. T tops. Uh, I don't remember what that stands for, but that's um certain type of convertible car where um sort of segments are removed from from the roof rather than the whole thing. And Queen Mary or Queen Elizabeth. Are these, sh I mean, these are ships as well. They're, I mean, they're obviously, they're obviously um, British or English monarchs, but I'm wondering if there's a cleverer implication here. I'm not sure. Source of much early immigration to the U.S. abbreviation. Germany, maybe? Fanning of film. L. L. Fanning is, is an actor, right? So England, then maybe. Um, not sure. Let's see. What else can we look at? John of Monty Python fame would be John Cleese, and Crafts site could be Etsy, uh, which sells homemade goods, ostensibly, and Judgment Days are trial dates, um, judgment in court, court judgment. Oh, sorry, what did I say trial judge? This is, t I'm glad I looked at this again. Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, those are both Tudor monarchs. They're of the Tudor uh, uh, how, dynasty house. So, right, that fortunately immediately um, corrected my mistake here once I saw what that was. Okay. Source of much, oh, Europe simply, I suppose. Source of much early immigration to the US, Europe. That includes both of my previous guesses. And like some horse bedding, straws. Straws? It says like, which is an adjective. Not sure. Regret to regret something is to rue it. They might help you get a job. Inns, you could have an in at a particular organization, someone you know. Stern word could be aft on a ship, and classic Van Gogh for Van Gogh subject. Uh, I know both of those are not proper, properly pronounced. Uh, sunflowers was, was a classic subject of his painting. So, hmm, like some horse bedding. Straw. A bygone age, yesteryear. Oh, straw -y. Ah, that is repulsive. straw -y. I really cannot abide that. Oh, that is just horrible. Okay. Proper noun. Oh, that's that's funny. So we have the question mark for a bit of pun or wordplay, and so the proper noun here. We we can see proper has one more p than it should have if we were using the word proper to mean correct or appropriate. 
And um, here it means something that props something up. So a T props up the golf ball, for instance. Bygone era and then Kazakhstan, e.g. formally, is a Soviet socialist republic or what was during the uh, era of the Soviet Union. So formally an SSR. There we go. Computer pros are what? Techs, maybe? And lid seen in a kitchen. Slip past. Just slip past someone is to elude them. Oh, prefix with glottis is your epiglottis. And when doubled, not so subtle nudge. You could say hint, hint to um, drop an extremely overt hint. They seem to believe otherwise. They seem to believe otherwise. Probably ends in an S. Does it? Let's check this. Blank Colvin, civil rights pioneer, who refused to give up her seat on a segregated bus nine months before Rosa Parks. Oh, I've certainly uh, heard of this person. I don't think that ends with an S. Is it Claudette? So what would this be? They seem to believe otherwise. A sect? A religious sect that splintered off because they have different beliefs, maybe? When preceded by the circled letters, progression starting with zero and one. Oh, sequence. Well, I guess it does start with zero. How does that work? Sorry, I'm not enough of a, of a math teacher to see that. So it starts with zero. And then you add itself plus the previous number. Maybe it's just that each time, it's just that you add one, two, three, four, five, you know, you know, add N, that number in the sequence. So you start by adding one to zero. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> this looks like toque, is it? Yes, lid seen in a kitchen. A toque, a chef's hat. And then warehouse store equipment is... Um, what did I tell you? See? Warehouse store equipment. Why don't I see what that is? And much desired is... <laughs> Why am I blanking out here right in this part of the grid? I don't know. People of a cat's eye often. A slit, maybe? And some shindigs are soirees. All right, so, oh, dear, much desired dear. Oh, dollies, of course, in a warehouse. You'd have dollies to um, push things around more easily. Okay, that all made sense. Cat. Why is cat in quotation marks? What does that mean? And here we have, oh, right, we're back to this. When preceded by the, na by the circled letters, natural shape seemed to be set in 61 across and 27 down. So sunflowers but also, so 61 across the sunflowers and 27 down. Um, tsunami, maybe? Like the wave, oops, that's like the wave that um, it's illustrated here in this crossword. So it is a wave after all, it appears to be, maybe. Or maybe it's just generically the spiral that, that is associated with this Fibonacci sequence. Um, right, so what is this? Fibonacci, when preceded by the circled letters, when preceded by Fibonacci, Fibonacci, oh, this is, uh, this is really getting to me. What, what am I missing? A dilemma, and the wait's almost over. Maybe it's not tsunami. Blank jacket, formal menswear. Suit jacket? Is it more complicated than that? Naval rank. I don't know. Suit seems too obvious. What about this? Uses psychedelics. Trips, maybe? A naval rank. It could be ensign. Diner cry after a bell is rung. And certain cephalopods. Octopi? Sort of incorrect to say. Um, oh, no, that doesn't fit anyway. Um, good. 
Uh, what other cephalopods are there? Well, I mean, that fit in here is what I mean to say. Parkinson's treatment. Oh, is L-DOPA a Parkinson treatment? That's I associated that with AIDS. Maybe I'm getting maybe I'm getting things confused. Polynesian performance could be a hula dance, maybe. Does that work here? An, al <laughs> an alternative. So an alternative to the word an, which would be the. So an being an indefinite article and the being a definite article. That's very funny. And the question mark indicates that there's a bit of punnery or wordplay going on, which indeed there is. Dinner, oh, order up. So you, Right, so stereotypically in a diner, you might, uh, food is prepared and they'll say order up and then the server will take it to the table. Oh, an Eaton jacket, so named for the um, English prep school. Oh, not a lie. Ah, that makes much more sense than octopi. Okay, um, because a nautilus has uh, a shell that is being depicted here in the... the um, well, in the grid and also in this Fibonacci sequence. So great. So what is cat? Oh, cool dude. <laughs> okay. So here we're using cat in the, um, I guess, slightly archaic slang sense to mean a cool dude, I guess. Oh, so it's just spiral. It's just a Fibonacci spiral after all of that. Okay. So that's funny. We had the word sequence in here in a Oh, right. Yes, this was themed because it is referring to the, to the progression, of course. Okay. Um, so we referred to the Fibonacci spiral and the Fibonacci sequence. So there we go. That, that all makes sense. Very clever. And then a dilemma is a spot. You could be in a bit of a spot. And word with snake or salad could be oil. So snake oil or salad oil, I guess. Yeah. Well, at least that's what I was saying. I don't quite understand what that is, but that's fine. <laughs> oil salad. Salad oil. I don't know. Let's admire the puzzle. So, uh, very good. So, uh, of course, the first thing you see when you load this puzzle is a spiral, meaning this crossword has no symmetry in the grid whatsoever, which is very unusual for a New York Times crossword. I mean, we're sort of hinting at, no, there really isn't any symmetry at, at all. There's sort of incidental symmetry, like this three cell little bit here and this three cell bit here are radially symmetrical, but that's, yeah, not much. And, um, And yes, a very clever illustration of a theme here. So we have our, our spiral, we have our Fibonacci sequence that's illustrated in our numbered cells. That's very clever. So of course the constructor had to ensure that, uh, that those letters all made sense. And then we had references to the Fibonacci spiral and the Fibonacci sequence. And we had examples of where they um, where we might see them in nature, for instance. So the in nautili, the aquatic creatures, and in sunflowers, the, the plants. So very good. And then the, I guess the Fibonacci sequence didn't have any examples of anything, but that makes sense because when it's just the numbers and it's not applied, it's sort of hard to... Um, yeah, that makes sense. All right. Very good. Very clever puzzle. And I found it a little tricky for whatever reason. What did I struggle on? Um, I guess Karunas, the Czech uh, unit of uh, currency, and then anything else. Prob oh, oh, I never saw this. Student-led LBGTQ plus group is GSA. Okay. And then I'm trying to think, is there anything else I didn't really look at? I don't think so. We had our <laughs> Pose the Raven, once, once Upon a Midnight Dreary. Um, while I pondered weak and weary, and so on. Many security guards, ex-cops. Trying to think if there's anything else notable. I don't know. I seem to be in a very rambly mood today. I should probably probably means I should bring this this uh, video to a close. Um, El Dopa. I need to refresh my memory on that. Actually, the uh, Parkinson's treatment. And um, all right, very good, very clever puzzle. I really uh, I really enjoyed stumbling on. Well, sort of not quite fully stumbling on, but but starting to become have more suspicions about the theme with this math teacher, I think. Once I think that was, if I recall correctly, that's what made me start wondering if that's what it could be. And then once you see it illustrated out in this way, 
in the grid and then also through the spirals. It's, it's very clever. It's a very, very um, well-explored theme and very Thursday appropriate, especially with the asymmetrical grid. Thursday is definitely the day to break break rules and break conventions in the New York Times crossword. Anyway, well done, Adam Wagner. I really enjoyed that. And let's let's move on. We can discuss some clues from yesterday's puzzle. How about that? We have um, a very good point from Adders Weinst- uh, Anders. I'm sorry, Anders Weinstein, who says, "I think you didn't highlight that the theme in the puzzle is not just adding an e, but in all cases forming a French loan word by adding the e with an accent aigu, pronounced a, as in attaché in the um, the uh, revealer." And Anders says, "This leaves fewer possibilities for theme phrases and makes the revealer attaché." even more clever. Yes, that's very true. That's a very good point. And you're right. I completely um, missed it during my uh, my solve on the video. So we had um, words like touch types becoming touche types and goes on the lamb becoming goes on the lame. And indeed, it is much more clever to have found all four of those examples, five, including the revealer, that all have that French E ending, attaché. Um, got down pate, very clever. And uh, sorry, I didn't give it proper due during the during the, during the video. All right, Brian Spurrier says the easiest way to descri- describe a stratovolcano is that it is the most stereotypical volcano. It is defined by its conical shape and viscous lava that either erupts in a steady stream or explosively. Basically, every famous volcano is a stratovolcano: Vesuvius, Krakatoa, Mount St. Helens, etc. So, thank you, Brian Spurrier, for that. Uh, geological explanation. And um, I guess because we don't have very many yesterday, I'll read this uh, additional clue. FST, or question, FST MR10 says, out of curiosity, what did you major in at the University of California? I majored in music of all things. <laughs> Go figure. So at that, that's that for yesterday's clues. That's that for today's video and today's puzzle. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, please do leave a comment in the, uh, I never say that, do I? Boy, I'm really in a spacey sort of mood today. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, do leave a comment if you want to. <laughs> you can leave a comment correcting me about today's um, video or anything else. And uh, subscribe as well if you've been enjoying it. And why not like the video? I'm saying all kinds of things today. You could like the video as well. I never say that either. All right. Thank you for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow, Friday, for uh, a straightforward, more straightforward puzzle, unthemed, Maybe a little more difficult, so I hope I'm in a I hope I'm in a more rigorous <laughs> frame of mind tomorrow to deal with that. Anyway, I will be back then. I uh, hope to see you as well. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm-hmm.